In this video, you are going to learn everything you need to know to get started on Elemental Shaman in Cataclassic. You're going to learn the best race, talents, glyphs, gear, professions, and of course, the macros to get you instantly ahead of the competition. Okay, so before we start, if you want a fresh UI for Kata using our brand new Skillcapped add-on, be sure to check out our updated classic site at skillcapped.com. We've got literally everything you need to make sure you don't fall behind in the latest expansion, including specialized guides at your fingertips from rank one players, which will teach you exactly what you need to master your class. From maximizing damage to mastering CC and more, everything is covered. And while everyone else is going to be slowly figuring everything out themselves, you can skip this process with Skillcat quickly putting you ahead of the competition. So much so, in fact, that we literally guarantee you'll gain at least 400 rating when actively using our service. So join us today using the exclusive discount link in the description below. Anyway, let's get back to the video. So let's kick things off at the character select screen where it's time to choose your race. Elemental Shaman has two main options on the Alliance side. Draenei is a good all around pick, the extra 1% hit and gift of the Nehru are two very powerful racials as they provide some additional healing. And now that hit is very helpful as it allows you to gear for a bit more damage and the bonus heal will be useful in literally every matchup. Now, as a more situationally useful pick, Dwarf is also very strong. Stone form will cleanse you of any bleeds, poisons, or diseases, but it won't remove magical debuffs and curses this gets enormous value into Feral Druids. Now, if you're wanting to play Horde, then you're limited to a single option, and that option is Orc. Now, this is simply because of the stun reduction that's provided. While Troll and Goblin give some haste, it really isn't all that useful enough to justify taking over the stun reduction. Talents work slightly different in Cataclysm, so let's break down everything that you need to know. There's only one build that you're gonna be playing as an Elemental Shaman. The only real points you'll swap around are focused on changing your survivability based on what you're struggling most with. Now, what you might notice is that we aren't putting that many points into the enhancement tree and are missing out on instant Ghost Wolf. Now, the reality is that it's very hard to actually kite players in Cataclysm as an Ellie Shaman, making instant Ghost Wolf a lot less valuable. Now, instead, we've moved these points into the Resto Tree for added defensive bulk, including 10% less damage while casting, 15% increased healing taken, and Nature's Guardian as an emergency defensive pillow when we drop low. Now, if you wanted, you could drop these last few talents in the Resto Tree to pick up 3 points in Improved Shields and 2 points into Ancestral Swiftness, but you might see limited benefits from this inside of Arena for the reasons we previously mentioned. Finally, you could drop up to three talent points in Elemental Precision in order to pick up feedback, but this would mean needing to itemize for more hit. And since Cataclysm games are relatively short, you might not get much value out of Elemental Mastery CDR. Okay, so before we continue, we have an exclusive skill cap tip to help you get started in Cata PvP coming directly from our new classic course. In this video, we're gonna be going over our most important mechanic of Elemental Shaman's Burst, Fulmination and Lightning Shield. When it comes to dealing huge damage, other than the very obvious Elemental Mastery ability, we're also gonna be looking to use nine stacks of Fulmination to create huge burst windows that your opponents may not expect by delivering a massive Earth Shock. To generate Fulmination stacks, we're going to be looking to use Lightning Bolts, which have a chance at giving us a stack due to the Rolling Thunder talent, as well as our Lightning Shield giving us a stack when we're hit, so we're not always in full control of how many charges we can get at one time. Now, for this reason, we're not going to want to be wasting these stacks, so we're only going to be consuming them when we know we can generate pressure with it, such as if there's crowd control on the enemy healer, or if we have the ability to cast Lava Burst before the Earth Shock, so we can get even more damage landing at the same time, as well as benefiting from the Elemental Oath talent, increasing the Earth Shock's damage by a further 10%. 
Now, it's always important to remember that sitting on stacks is fine and waiting for the right opportunity is actually more worthwhile than just having big damage on details. If you want to learn more tips like these, then check out our brand new class courses at skillcap.com by using the links below. Along with talents, though, the glyph system has changed slightly in Cataclysm as well. Now you're going to have three additional prime glyph slots on top of major and minor. Your glyphs are fairly set in stone, but there are some minor adjustments that you can make. Your first prime glyph will be Glyph of Flame Shock. This increases the duration of Flame Shock and tends to be your highest damaging ability. Your second prime glyph is Lava Burst. This is a simple damage increase to one of our main damaging abilities. And finally, we have Glyph of Unleashed Lightning. This is a huge quality of life glyph as it allows us to cast Lightning Bolt while moving. Your build will have three major glyphs, Hex, Stoneclaw Totem, and Thunder. Glyph of Hex is great as it reduces the cooldown of Hex by 10 whole seconds. Glyph of Stoneclaw is crucial for your survival as it gives you a damage absorb when you drop this totem. And Glyph of Thunder reduces the cooldown of your knockback by 10 seconds, which can be crucial for your survivability. Now, Glyph of Hex isn't mandatory, and you do have some potential alternatives here. Healing Stream will make it so your totem provides a resistance buff. This is a nice quality of life as it can be useful when you're playing a comp that doesn't have a resistance aura or buff. Glyph of Elemental Mastery is another defensive option as it provides a 20% damage reduction during this cooldown. Finally, our minor glyphs are really not too important and they won't have any impact on the game at all. Now, these are really up to you, but we slotted in Renewed Life, Water Blessing, and Astral Recall as none of your minor glyphs will affect the game. Now, before we show you your best in slot, be sure to check out our article site after the video for your pre-biz gear using the link in the description below. All right, next up, let's go over your best in slot gear for season nine. First up, let's go over stat priority. You're gonna want as much intellect as possible, which you're gonna naturally acquire through your gear. You'll then want to reach your 4% hit cap. Remember, you get hit from spirit, and if you're a Draenei, you'll only need an extra 3% hit, so gear accordingly. You'll then need 195 spell penetration. This is gonna ensure that your offensive spells are not resisted. After that, you'll want 3,000 Resilience, although more Resilience is always better, as you'll likely be the kill target. Finally, you want to get as much haste as possible. There's not a specific amount that you're going for, other than you want as much haste as you can get. To fill in any gaps, you can get some additional Mastery and then Critical Strike. In Season 9, all of your best in slot gear is going to come from PvP. Elemental Shaman is a common kill target, and you're going to be thankful to have the extra resilience. Your main pieces will be the Vicious Gladiator's Thunder Fist set, which includes the Vicious Gladiator's male armor, leggings, spalders, and helm. You'll use the standard Vicious Gladiator's Ringmail Gauntlets over the standard Mail Gauntlets, as the Ringmail Gauntlets have better stats. For your off pieces, you'll want Vicious Gladiator's Drape of Diffusion, for your Bracers will be Vicious Gladiator's Armbands of Prowess. You'll then use Vicious Gladiator's Waste Guard of Cruelty in the Waste slot. Finally, to round out your off pieces, you're going to have Vicious Gladiator's Sabatons of Alacrity in the Boot slot. For your weapons, you're going to be using Vicious Gladiator's Spellblade in the main hand and Vicious Gladiator's Redoubt in your off hand. The Relic slot will be occupied by the Vicious Gladiator's Relic of Salvation. For your jewelry, you're going to pick up the Vicious Gladiator's Pendant of Alacrity. For your rings, you'll want to grab the Vicious Gladiator's Band of Cruelty and Meditation, which will bring you closer to your hit cap. Finally, for your trinkets, use the Vicious Gladiator's Medallion of Tenacity. You'll then use the Dark Moon card Volcano. If you find yourself struggling to survive, you can drop this for another PvP trinket. When it comes to reforging, you won't need to do much except optimize our secondary stats, as with this gear, we're already at our hit cap. But if you're a Draenei, you might need to reforge some spirit off of your gear. Okay, so with your gear sorted, let's get everything gemmed and enchanted. 
Your best enchants are not going to change as the expansion progresses. Your helmet enchant, Arcanum of Vicious Intellect, comes from PvP, so it's going to be relatively easy to obtain. Your second enchant is Greater Inscription of Vicious Intellect for your shoulders. This too comes from PvP. Then head to the Auction House where you're going to be picking up the rest of your enchants. For your chest, we highly recommend Mighty Resilience as you will be the kill target in most matchups. You'll then grab Mighty Intellect for your bracers, Haste for your gloves, and Haste for your boots. Now, we don't take Lava Walker because movement speed increases don't increase the speed of Ghost Wolf. We recommend tailoring for your profession, which means your cloak will be enchanted with Lightweave Embroidery, but if you aren't a tailor, use Greater Intellect. For the remaining slots, embellish your legs with powerful enchanted spell thread, and then put Power Torrent on your main hand and Superior Intellect on your offhand. Finally, don't forget to get an Even Steel Belt Buckle for an extra gem slot. And speaking of which, let's get things gemmed. For your meta socket, you're going to be slotting in a Burning Shadow Spirit Diamond. This is going to provide you with some intellect and increase your critical strike damage. In your red slots, your default pick should be the Willful Ember Topaz, since we're going to need the resilience. And then in yellow sockets, put Mystic Amber Jewel for the same reason. In your blue slots, you'll use Purified Demon's Eye to help bring you to your hit cap. Professions will matter once more in Cataclysm, and there are a few choices. You want to go jewel crafting and tailoring, but you do have some flexibility here. Your first default pick is tailoring for Lightweave Embroidery. This enchant provides a massive spell power buff. This can be crucial for landing kills during important windows, or we can save our CC for this proc. Jewel crafting is our second pick. This allows us to use the Chimera's Eye Gems. We'll use the Mystic Chimera's Eyes for more resilience, but you can go with the Brilliant Chimera's Eyes. This does reduce our survivability quite a bit, but if you're confident, you're going to be able to live without the extra resilience, and you can pick up more damage. You do have the option of going blacksmithing as an alternative to jewel crafting. It is technically slightly less stats in Season 9, but it is going to be more stats in later seasons when we have access to epic gems. Your second alternative pick is Engineering, and unlike most classes, Elemental doesn't use an on-use trinket, so the Engineering Gloves don't share a cooldown with any other item in our equipment set. Finally, let's wrap things up with every macro you're going to need in PvP. First up, you'll want Focus Macros for Hex, Purge, and Wind Shear. These are your main forms of utility, so you want to be able to reliably and quickly respond to any situations. Purge is good to remove important buffs such as Innervate, Avenging Wrath, and so on. If you're looking to elevate your macros, though, you can take these and turn them into Arena 1-2-3 macros for Hex and Wind Shear. This will give you the most control and speed if you can afford the keybind space. You can also create a macro to use Stone Form with Health Stone if you're playing Dwarf and you're struggling to survive. We also recommend having party macros for Cleanse Spirit, Healing Wave, and Gift of the Nehru. This will allow you to quickly use these abilities without having to target your teammates. Finally, you can consider making 1-2-3 macros for your Shocks. This can allow you to slow with Frost Shock or reapply Flame Shock when it's dispelled or falls off. All right, guys, that about wraps it up for this one. Before you go, though, be sure to check out Skill Capped. We are the only service that dares to literally guarantee you're going to climb at least 400 rating when actively using our service. And, uh, well, if you don't, you don't pay. Simple as that. As always, though, we want to thank you all for watching, and we'll see you soon.